<laughs> welcome back to welcome the Good Morning back. Niger show. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. All right. Yes, for those who are we don't do it us, I'm sure you guys are enjoying the show. We're bringing you every better, better thing where we need to give you all the information we need to hear. We've done our top stories. They were very, very, you know, insightful and educative. A lot of them, I don't see things when I don't know, say, happen over the night. And they don't happen this morning. And we don't talk to Ezuku Chukudi. We give us, you know, as I talk, I ain't hear the newspapers. They always they do. He will come happy and live frowning. <laughs> and say some kind of things. Uh, you see some kind of things where you know to yes, like the newspaper. As but, usual. Hey. But we can only do the best that we can and ensure that we will continually bringing you updates. Yes, uh, we're so. bringing you all the updates of what's happening around Nigeria. Now it's time for us to have a very important conversation. The federal government had predicted that Nigerians, about 33.5% Nigerians, will lose their jobs. Now we're starting to see that the numbers are rising by the day with mm -hmm. lots of people having lost their jobs. Others still going to lose their job. Some others are now starting to think of other career options and how they can switch career paths. And some others are absolutely clueless as to what to do and how to go about it. Well, today we've decided to be your anchor by bringing in someone who's an expert career coach. His name is Dr. Dipo Awojide. He's a career coach and the founder of BTDT Hub. And today he'll be talking to us about positioning yourself to get a new job and advancing your career, basically. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Dipo. It's a delight to have you. Good morning, Olive. Um, good, morning. good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So I think we should first of all start by asking you from your perspective. We know that you assist a lot of people in getting jobs and you're always tweeting about opportunities and tweeting about how people can position themselves effectively for jobs. How would you rate the loss, the job employment or the job loss rate so far? How frequent would you say you've been getting messages, you know, in comparison to what it was like before COVID-19? Okay, so um, there's the bad news, but of course, there's also the, the, the good news. A lot of people are going to lose their jobs in certain industries and job sectors because of COVID-19. But some jobs are also going to be created, um, you know, after all this pandemic is over and we return to, you know, what some people call normal. But I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's going to be any normal going forward. Mm -hmm. Um, but the key point is, some people are going to lose jobs. A lot of people actually are going to lose their jobs. Some new jobs are going to be created in specific sectors. So it is up to individuals to look inwards, okay? Look at themselves, look at the skills and the competencies that they currently possess, and try to carry out, you know, an analysis of those industries that jobs are likely to be lost and also understand, you know, those industries that jobs are likely to be created. Mm. And what they need to do subsequently is position themselves, you know, for the new jobs that are going to be created in those existing industries. Mm. Okay, so maybe we should also look at some of the industries that um, have lost or would potentially lose jobs because you, we know that a lot of them are, are, are in jobs that in, involve physical contact. But beyond that, uh, maybe you should give us an insight to some of the industries that will be gaining, some of the industries that will be losing from where you stand. Okay, so um, post-COVID-19, a lot of um, people who would normally go to cinemas, um, you know, would prefer to sit at home with their family or friends and watch movies, you know, um, via Netflix, via YouTube, or other video, you know, video on-demand services. So... You know, that on-video demand industry definitely is going to experience a growth. In fact, Netflix, you know, um, Q1 2020, their profit, their revenue and profit has actually skyrocketed. So folks who work in the cinema industry, you know, they have to start considering, you know, what is the implication of this, of, of this pandemic? What is it going to do to them? And um, SPM Intel... Um, you know, funded by Cheta Mwaze, has actually created, you know, created a, a fantastic analysis, a fantastic table, you know, um, I mean, of course, as well as other experts across the world. Mm. So some industries or those industries that more or less will be, you know, will be moderately exposed in terms of, you know, the corona, um, coronavirus pandemic, the education sector, you know, the real um, estate sector, but 
industries that are more likely to suffer huge losses, job losses, the automotive industry, you know, the banking and finance industry, you know, construction, entertainment, travel industry. So towards the, I mean, from now to 20, to, till the end of 2020, I doubt if, you know, loads of people want to travel across the world you know, for Nigerians who go to Dubai or for people who travel to New York and to London, a lot of people would actually want to sit in their houses or in their countries. And what that translates into is loss of revenue for airline companies, loss of revenue for the airline industry. And a lot of airline companies, even in the UK and in the US now, you know, are beginning to experience um, significant financial constraints. And this is basically because people are not traveling, you know, flights are banned, and this has had a negative impact on the airline industry. Transportation, luxury goods, these are some other industries, you know, that would be highly exposed to this pandemic. Um, of course, there are other industries like the beverage, chemicals, healthcare products, you know, these industries would, would experience low exposure. Professional services like accountants, lawyers, the telecoms industry. So Globalcom, uh, MTN, these industries or these these companies would experience, you know, a low exposure to, um, you know, this you know coronavirus pandemic and its implication as regards to you know job creation or job losses. So as I noted earlier, it is up to young professionals. It is up to individuals to you know, analyze themselves. So carry out a SWOT analysis. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are the opportunities out there? What are the threats in the external environment, okay? And they also need to carry out what I refer to as a personal skills audit. So what are your current skills, your current capabilities? Are you excellent with leadership skills, communication skills, team working skills? What can you do differently? Okay, so having a good understanding of the industries that jobs are likely to be lost, um, to, 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 be, to be lost, having a good understanding of industries that jobs are likely to be created, and understanding yourself and positioning yourself is the way forward. All right, so um, the, the Dr. Dick Bonner, speaking about industries that uh, you just gave us a, a brief analysis of the industries that most likely would be effect, affected by this coronavirus pandemic. Now, for uh, an entrepreneur who has been in this industry for a long period of time, all right, and right now he's faced with this situation, uh, evolving or, you know, changing his industry would be very, very difficult because... You have been in this industry all, almost when you, you decided to do business, and it's been productive for you. Now the situation has happened. Uh, now, how would you say it would be the easiest way or the quickest way to shift from one industry, one major industry to another? Let's speak of someone who is in entertainment, knowing fully well that uh, you can't have um, events anymore, you can't travel for shows, you can't do this. So how would you just transform or move from that industry easily to another industry? So how would you be able to, um, what are the advice you will give that will help them, you know, just ease the transition from this industry to another? Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, although I might not be able to, you know, um, speak specifically for the entertainment industry or for anyone who is in entertainment, mm -hmm. I can give you know, generic opinions and generic okay. advice okay. for what people who on micro, small, or medium enterprises can do. Okay. So earlier in the year, the Lagos State Government actually, um, you know, changed or came up with a new policy as regards um, bike alien services. Mm -hmm. Gokada and um, Ope and mm -hmm. some of the other companies, you know, some of them sort of um, closed that section of the business. Some of them actually reinvented themselves and started delivering parcels. Mm. Okay, some other ones perhaps moved into, you know, um, food delivery. You know, like helping restaurants to deliver food all across Lagos. Yeah. So the key point here is that you know SME owners, people who run small, micro, or you know medium enterprises, they need to be adaptable and flexible. Mm. And of course, they also need to look for 
you know, um, disruptive ideas, come up with disruptive ideas that would help them survive. Because the truth is, a lot of indo a lot of companies, a lot of businesses are going to going to fail. I mean, this is the bad news, but unfortunately, we have to say say it exactly as it is. A lot of businesses are going to fail, and of course, some businesses are also going to be created. Existing businesses, if you have five or six main services, so BTDT Hub, in the last six to eight weeks, some of our services we have made a lot of money. Some of our services we have made, you know, zero naira from those services. So it is entirely up to you know entrepreneurs, business owners, business managers to think about which services you know do we need to continue do we need to continue delivering or which product do we need to emphasize on more, which product or services do we need to pull out, which product or services do we need to reinvent? Okay. Mm. So business leader, you know, how how are we going to survive this? Are we going to survive this? You know, by coming up with discounts, are we going to survive this by reducing our prices? Are we going to, you know, survive and remain in business by cutting, you know, our number of employees? And you know, once again, this is job losses, but unfortunately, it has to be done. So these are some, you know, things that business leaders and you know that entrepreneurs or you know um, people who run small, micro, or medium enterprises have to think about. They have to think about. How are they going to survive? So how are we going to survive until the end of 20, you know, the end of 2020? Mm -hmm. And from 2021 onwards, how are we going to survive? What is our, our short to medium term strategy? What is our long term strategy? So entrepreneurship basically, you know, is all about taking risks. It's all about being creative. It's all about coming up with, you know, genuine ideas, you know, solving societal problems. And you know, making room from solving those problems. So a genuine entrepreneur, a real entrepreneur, a smart entrepreneur would always, you know, come up with new ideas, would always come up with new products and new services that people are willing to pay for. Okay. Now, I'd like us to focus now on young people or people who are generally looking for jobs. There's some people that have jobs that are looking to switch jobs because right now they've experienced a huge pay cut. And I won't, I'm sure that you've also seen that even as many as are losing jobs, we're still seeing a large number of people getting the dream jobs that they've always wanted. So what would be the steps and the guidelines that you would explain or you would give to someone who is looking to position themselves for a new job? And what are some of the do's and don'ts they need to look out for, especially as regards drafting their CV? Okay, so for those who are, um, you know, looking for a new job, perhaps in, an, in, in, the, in the industry that they're already working on in a, in a new industry, you know, once again, they need to carry out an introspection. So you need to understand yourself. You need to know your skills, your capabilities, and your competences. And of course, they also have to be commercially aware. So what is the job market saying? What is the industry saying? What companies are currently hiring or what companies are likely to hire in the next couple of weeks or next couple of months? And what they need to do is brand themselves excellently. So you know yourself, you need to be able to articulate your skills and your competencies on paper. Okay, so on paper, via your CV, and via your cover letter, and of course, via your LinkedIn profile. So this is something that BTDT or my company actually does. But of course, we also give people free advice. So for those who want to review their CVs or their cover letters themselves, we, we create resources and we share these resources freely on social media, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram. On a daily basis, we share very useful resources. So, you know, you need to ensure that you brand yourself excellently and get ready for what is to come or you know position yourself for the job that you are looking for and beyond being able to articulate yourself on paper they also need to prepare you know get ready to articulate yourself in person so when you go for interviews you have to be very confident you have to be very bold you have to be able to think on your feet Okay, so you have to be able to respond to interview questions. And thanks to, you know, our Chief Operating Officer, Loa Dunifani, she actually, you know, did deliver a session on, on Instagram Live, um, you know, two days ago on how people can position themselves or can ace 
or smash interviews excellently. Unfortunately, we had less than 300 people on that show. But if it was, you know, some entertainment, some, you know, um, I mean, I don't want to go there. I'm just going to end that conversation there. But yeah, people need to basically prepare their CVs, you know, their cover letter, get a professional to take a look at it, or do it yourself, okay, via the you know, resources that professionals actually share online. You want to ensure that there's consistency in your use of tenses. You want to ensure that there are no grammatical errors. You want to ensure that, you know, the, the fonts that you use is, is, is actually very good. You want to ensure that you don't have frivolous information on there, like your religion, like your sex, like your date of birth, the local government area. If it is not a federal government job, and the, the company is not specifically requesting for this information, please just yank up this information and ensure that you have a one-page or a two-page CV, okay? So if you have less than five years' experience and you haven't worked in up to, you know, four or five companies, I would expect that you keep your CV to, you know, a minimum of two pages. There is no need for someone who has less than five years to have a four-page or a five-page CV. It is too long. No HR person is going to look at it. They are going to throw your CV in the bin within 30 seconds. So please make sure you keep it short, keep it concise, keep it, you know, um, keep grammatical blunders off your CV and ensure it looks aesthetically beautiful. Uh, but uh, um, I would just uh, want to come in there. Speaking about the CV now, because uh, a lot of times people feel that uh, they need to fill up the CV to show the amount of experience they have. And uh, that can also serve as a, as a, as a, a plus to their, uh, you know, when they are being evaluated by the HR uh, personal representative, saying that, oh, you've done so many things and uh, worked in so many places, and they, they just feel that they need to document all this in the CV. And now you say that it is best to keep it short, as short as possible. Now, what happens to all the other experiences that they have had? Would they just would, would they pick the ones that they feel are, um, are, are, are more um, you know um, needed in the current job they are seeking, or how would they deduce which to pick and which not to pick and put on the CV? Okay, thank you very much for that important question. So ultimately, it's about understanding the company that you want to work for, mm -hmm. okay? The company you are applying to, and of course, the role that you are applying to. So if you are applying for a customer service role, or if you are applying for a procurement role, mm -hmm. or if you are applying for you know, a PR um, associate role, or a financial analyst role, you need to, be, you need to you know, trim your CV down you know, to the experiences and skills that is that are you know actually well suited for that particular role that you are applying for. Okay. So in, in some instances, you don't have to include all your experience. Mm -hmm. In other instances, you know you you need to limit down, you know the number of information you capture on your CV. So some companies, for example, I mean when I mean we do recruiting for companies, um, you know, and many times when I recruit, especially if you have less than five years experience, what I ask for is a resume. So a resume is a one-page document that goes straight to the point. Mm -hmm. What patient do you have? What, what are your core skills? What companies have you worked for? So there's no need to include your entire life history on your CV, okay? Mm -hmm. So it is entirely up to each individual, okay, to you know, decide this specific job that I'm applying for. So I'm applying for a customer service job, but I've also done, you know, procurement, you know, three or four years ago. Do I need to include that procurement role or procurement experience on my CV? So if I have, you know, 10 lines for the customer service role that I'm applying for, I might include, you know, perhaps two or three lines, you know, for that procurement job, just to show that, you know, I have, you know, this experience in this particular industry. Especially, or, or in this particular company, especially if that company is a very, very good company, you want to show off yeah. that you've actually worked, worked there. the top company. Mm -hmm. What is even more important beyond, you know, having roles and responsibilities on your CV is actually having, you know, achievements. So what are your outstanding achievements? 
How much have you made for a company? What awards have you won? What businesses or new products have you introduced? So this, I believe, is even more important than just having a list of experiences on your CV. Hmm, All right, Dr. Tupo, before we let you go, I think it's important that we also look at apps and websites and links that will be helpful and resourceful. We know that there are resume builder apps. There are many people who haven't had to touch their resume in the past five years because they've been working the same job, but now they realize that it's time for them to get new jobs, so they have to go back and work on it. So what apps would you recommend? What links, what websites would you recommend to help people as they proceed with their you know, intentions to find new jobs? I mean, there are there are loads of um, you know there are loads of apps online. There are loads of um, you know people who post um, you know jobs on a daily basis, on especially on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. BTDT Hub is one of them. Um, you know, I think we are one of the best in the country. Um, you know, known by a lot of young people. I mean, there are some other companies that are trying, but being an entrepreneur, I don't want to call the names of these companies because a lot of them are, um, you know, some are our collaborators, some are competitors. But yes, BTDT Hub actually, you know, shares a lot of useful resources on a daily basis. If you are actually looking for a job, you can go on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, you know, shares, you can actually, you know, if you have an, an, an outstanding profile, you can actually, you know, reach out to HR associates or reach out to business leaders, you know, basically networking with people, um, you know, shooting your shots. There's nothing wrong with shooting your shots. You might get ignored, but you don't even lose anything if you get ignored. And you might also get a response. If your profile looks good enough as well, in many instances or in some instances, you don't even have to reach out to these companies, you know. They would actually, if you use the right keywords, they would actually come looking for you. They would actually, you know, add on to you via your online profile. Wow. All Thank right. you so much, Dr. Dipo. You know, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. Uh, we will have to have another conversation again because it's important to talk about the use of keywords because these days we have apps that sort of screen the CVs even before they get to the HR persons mm -hmm. and they just use these keywords and flush away some pretty good CVs that wouldn't make the cut because they didn't use the right keywords. But this has been a very interesting conversation. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you so All right. much for having me. Thank you. We have been speaking with Dr. Dipo Awojide, who is a career coach and the founder of BTD.